good afternoon everyone good morning for our us listeners i know it's the, the, it was supposed to be the last one before the break maybe may hard please bear with me um, i'm alexander chernikov and today i'll talk about the routing changes that landed in 3 bsd 13. Uh, let's start with the agenda so i'll cover the motivation be behind these changes I'll talk about the important implementation details, namely next hopes, next hopes, and their resulting kernel program interface. Then I'll provide an overview for the new lookup algorithm framework. Specifically, I'll describe the, uh, the all algorithms and uh, their per performance. And finally, I'll provide details on the overall performance changes, uh, performance changes, and the next steps. So. Let's start with the motivation. Why why all of the, all of the changes are needed? Well, there are a number of driving factors. First, we finally wanted to to have a working multipath, especially with the uh, wide multipath groups. Um, second was the need to improve the the control plane performance under the traffic load. Uh, um, <clears throat> finally. Uh, it was better to, it was a dire need to simplify hacking of the routing subsystem. Um, so, and the problems with the, uh, with the routing subsystem was uh, primarily, it was the, the lack of isolation. Uh, there was a tight coupling on the routing of routing with nearly all other networking parts like struct rt entry which is tightly coupled with radix tree used and was used in like 100 different places so doing any change uh, there was extremely hard as it, uh, as it would require checking and uh, altering the code for uh, for all of the customers so how do we address all this uh, first, uh, the primary thing is to design the kernel programming interface with the isolation goal in mind. Uh, second, like the, the actual design change is uh, the ratio that most, like vast majority of lookup consumers, they don't require actual prefix data. They just care about the interface, gateway, route flags, MTU, and that's it which is so-called next hope based uh, information and the, the core idea was to construct kpi around the next hopes uh, so let's look at to what next hopes actually are uh, that's objects uh, collections of collection of information necessarily to to push uh, necessarily to push packets to the wire it consists of interface, gateway, MTU, and flags. Uh, next hops are immutable and they use epoch based reclamation. And internally, we use uh, auto resizable hash table to, to store all these. Uh, <clears throat> so before, uh, before the change, ERT entry had, uh, had most of this information. And now, it's just barely a prefix and a pointer to next hope nothing more uh, we use ref counting uh, for tracking uh, number of used uh, number of times next hope is used both in control plane and road caching which is now next hope caching um, <clears throat> Next hops are explicit. Next hop structure is explicitly split into two parts: the public and the private. The public part is like well public and returned by um, public uh, kernel programming interface. It mostly contains the data path, data, data. Uh, flags, MTU gateway interface pointers, and packet counters uh, is there. Uh, note there there is no more packet counter uh, per, per route and try packet counter anymore. It has moved to next hope. Uh, private part is used internally for housekeeping. It has original routing flags, reference counter, 
hash membership and uh, backlinks to all of the relevant objects. Um, <clears throat> XHOPs are better for data plane. Uh, they, their public part has smaller cache friendly, or has smaller and cache friendly footprint. They are better for control plane as they have all entities pre-calculated to deal with and control plane can just uh, operate with pointers for, for these next hops. Uh, peering routers and routers with a full view will have just hundreds net ho next hops, not millions. As, as there are a relatively small amount of next hops, it is easy to iterate and store additional information and yes, there are much less memory implications. Uh, and below you can see the, the example netstart has been extended to include all of the, uh, to dump all of the next hops uh, for the particular, for the particular routing table. Um, uh, the interface address here is the source address that will be used the gateway is either interface for the directly reachable routes. Gateway flags are pretty much the same as uh, as it was before. Uh, and uh, type and prepend that that's something that will be used in in future changes and are not used right now. Um, so let's talk about the next hop groups. The next hop groups are used to store multipath row data. So we can point to a single object that has all of the paths. This group are indeed just, just groups of next hops and their accompanying weights. Weight here is used to define the proportion of traffic. Uh, traffic groups split towards each next hops. So groups are internal to the routing subsystem and are not exposed externally. They are fully immutable and also used epoch-based reclamation. Uh, similar to the next hops, they are stored in, auto in automatically resized hash table. And each next hop group has its own index, so it can be referenced either by pointer or by index. Um, uh, the, the concept of the next hop group is uh, really simple, but we need to have an efficient data plane implementation uh, for it. There are multiple approaches that are typically used in FreeBSD currently, and just use the linear array of next hop pointers with uh, dynamic size. Uh, <clears throat> With, uh, for example, in the in the scenario you can see on the right, there are two next hopes with weight 200 uh, and 300. And so we need to balance the traffic two to three. And we do this by creating the group of size five, which fits perfectly here. Um, there are many corner cases where it's straight way less straightforward that like weight uh, one and weight 100. In this case, the logic will simply use array of maximum size, which is currently 64, and pack the next hops according to their weights. Uh, how to use it uh, from user land? You can, for manually added route, you can just use existing route functional route binary functionality, just using the weight key, keyword. Uh, again, the next home groups are not just to customers directly. Programming interface KPI selects the next hope from the next hope group uh, based on the providing flow, flow ID. Uh, the actual flow ID semantic is, is agnostic. It can be hardware originated value, read from the Nick Eric's ring. It can be IPv6 flow ID. It can be software RSS calculated value or literally anything else. 
data plane part of next hop group has the same offset of the flag field as the next hop. Each next hop group uh, has a uh, single flag set, namely MHF underscore multipath. When the lookup result is uh, returned, it is internally changed against presence of this flag, and if yes, um, it's typecasted to the next hop group, and the actual next hop is selected based on the module division of the size of next hop group. So, uh, <clears throat> Um, for the data plane programming interface, instead of uh, family agnostic functions as it was before, we use per family function functions. They don't require socket addresses, not placing a requirement to construct to construct such socket address in the caller. And as stated previously, they transparently handle multipath always returning a specific next hop so it's just a function of address to next hop pointer uh, so to recap in, inter, instead of always return routing entry which was a combination of prefix next hop data and like somehow skipping private information now now we just re return public version of next hop specific data and uh, do not expose any any internal implementation details no next hope groups no private uh, no private next hope data for the control plane interface uh, just use a single uh, single function uh, Rebection as uh, as before as before it uses the same uh, structure T other info to to pass all the data in. Uh, the primary difference here is that uh, epoch entering epoch is required upon function and next hope and next hope group creation updates everything uh, happens within the routing subsystem uh, no external caller has to be uh, is not required to to construct next hops and uh, next hope groups it is currently done transparently uh, so previously it was stated that the vast majority majority of the callers uh, don't require knowing the prefix of a matched entry. That's indeed the case. Uh, however, we still need to address the uh, rema remaining callers. Mm. For example, route get and net flow uh, are the ones that explicitly require knowing the, the prefix. This uh, special heap. Uh, lookup RT uh, functions returning RT entry and the next hope and wait data at the time of the lookup was created. Um, as there is no direct en entry access anymore, uh, there are special special accessor functions that used to to get the attributes out. That there are not of not a lot of attributes remaining there, uh, other than just uh, just prefix and the address family if needed if that if that simplifies the consumer code uh, <clears throat> well, so what what about the locking model again next hopes and next hope groups are mostly immutable changes in the road path attribute or multipath group forces creation of a new next hope or next hop group with that approach no per object specific logs are necessary and both next hops and next hop groups share the same read write log uh, which is which is a separately instantiated per per routing table uh, 
data plane is now uses next hop ref counts for route caching again now next hop caching and your rt entry doesn't hold any reference counts or logs anymore uh, for the user land part the changes are mostly transparent so old binaries such as uh, round binary and the round demons should work on certain stable uh, without any changes or recompilation uh, multipath works with quagga just out of the box and it's needed to additional work is required to to support multipath and bird due due to the fact how bird read the um, read the route uh, read the routing table it may be implemented uh, later as either the netlink support or a specific ex extension for the routing socket that would allow to provide additional details that would uh, help bird have the, the same simple implementation of the of reading routing table um, next hopes decouples of routing specific from the longest prefix match lookup algorithms now the algorithm just need to be a pure function that is ap address on the input and provide like pointer or index on the output uh, this is actually a requirement for the high performance lookup algorithms and as it's not always possible to store something more than just 32 bits worth of data as their result let's take a look at the lookup algorithm framework this is a new construct in the kernel and it serves multiple goals first is to optimize performance in the like, in the particular use case for example IPv6 lookups are different from IPv4 ones and the former is longer and the distribution is more sparse. Uh, and we still have a, uh, currently we still have a single algorithm REST, which is you, uh, which was used for both. Um, <clears throat> similarly, for view lookups are pretty much different from lookups of on the device with just 10 routes each of the each of such scenarios require a special like a special algorithm or at least algorithm which is both both well suited uh, in such scenarios and what that's why multiple algorithms is needed and that's uh, that's why the lookup framework is created uh, then second lockless lookups it further reduces data plane contention and provide better control plane performance during convergence as a routing daemon doesn't compare with the data plane for the routing table lock i guess uh, people who run routers on FreeBSD with full view has always seen uh, the real really slow congestion when one of the bgp peer goes down it, it is even hard to read the routing table uh, from the kernel and the programming rate is being really slow due to the fact that the lock is always contested uh, by the that data plane uh, then it's the foundation for the other address families well, for example in, in pls you don't you don't need to have um, longest prefix match at all you can just just use an like index table or hash table and finally it overall reduces the bar for like, implementing and testing new algorithms as you can do it in a fairly straightforward way around 200 lines of inside the kernel model should be enough to to have an algorithm that that would fit let's take a look at the features of the lookup framework uh, the algorithms can be loaded on the fly regardless of what routing tables state 
uh, what is the current routing table state it can be loaded and unloaded and so selected manually but uh, but by, by default it uses automatic algorithm selection by based on the amount of routes and the next hops that are currently present in the table. Um, this uh, automatic algorithm selection is run periodically. So, <clears throat> yeah, is run periodically. Again, there are no data plane logs for most of the algorithm. It is logless and the control plane is fully decoupled from the data plane. We have a separate state uh, inside the rib, that's the system radix, and we have a separate uh, state per the active lookup algorithm, which, which allows to have more efficient lookups. Um, some, some algorithms are pretty costly to apply uh, Update, update procedures in some algorithms are costier, so there is a desire to, to have some batching, and the uh, lookup framework provides this. <laughs> Internally, it has uh, another, uh, internally it has a number of subsystems within the framework, the reliable subscription for the routing changes has been implemented. Each <clears throat> framework uh, handles every failure by just spinning the new algorithm instance, uh, resulting in the additional simplicity and avoiding to handle too much corner cases, uh, simplifying the overall algorithm implementation and it is able to, to keep like multiple instances of the same uh, different algorithms for a table in sync, allowing to gradually move or uh, switch over between the like, old and new algorithms. And again, it provides delayed and batched updates. <clears throat> uh, let's talk about the automatic algorithm selection. Each algorithm has to implement a specific preference callback, which is based on the number of routes next hop return a preference value. And framework goes through all of the active algorithms, compares the values to select the best one. And it does periodic evaluation of such, uh, uh, periodic evaluation of all algorithms every 30 seconds or 100 routes. If if there, there were changes with the routing table. And to avoid flipping between old and new, new has to be at least 5% better to switch. <clears throat> As stated before, some of the algorithms are really, really costly uh, with regards to incremental updates. So batching has had to be implemented and there are conflicting requirements. We certainly want to batch more to amortize the, the cost of update. But on the other hand, we need to minimize the update delay and we need to find the sweet spot. So how do we do this? First of all, for the directly connected routes or for the static routes, uh, we don't do batching at all. We force immediate, uh, immediate change in the algorithm. Uh, for for all of the rest, we bucket update into 50 millisecond chunks and uh, provide, commit the update if it's before the threshold and the current threshold is 500 routes. If it's uh, larger than that, this means that we're in some convergence position. So we delay and look, uh, wait for the next bucket status. If in the following 50 milliseconds, we are still ahead of this 500 roads, we delay more, and the maximum delay is 100 millis uh, 1000 millisecond, and each value is configurable. 
<clears throat> for the control plane performance, again, the biggest thing here is that the data path uh, does not contest the routing table log anymore, and this greatly improves the convergence time. So in the in the test cases, uh, I've been running with the like one of the BGP full use going down uh, under under heavier data plane load, the time required to complete the update uh, to program all of the updated routes went down from uh, five minutes to basically 40 seconds. Let's talk about the actual lookup algorithms. There are seven um, algorithms available in uh, currently in, in the FreeBSD based. Uh, first two are the, are the DPDK uh, ports of DPDK RT LPM library for IPv4 and IPv6. Uh, another one is a DXR, which is a high performance algo contributed by Marco Zek. That's <laughs> IPv IPv4 only tail tail is suited well for both large and small amount of routes. Um, then the binary search ones, it's currently the default that used for these systems with the small amount of routes. <clears throat> and finally there is a lockless version of the system radix, which can just work as fallback if uh, nothing else works. The relative performance can be seen on the, on the table on the right. This is again, this is a single thread uh, performance. And due to the fact that all of it is lockless on the same NUMA node, it should, uh, it should scale linearly. Uh, let's take a look at the, each algorithm in more details. For, for the DPDK, again, it's a wrapper for DPDK RTA LPM6 library. For IPv4, it's the two-stage two lookup scheme, which is variation of DIR 2024-8. Uh, for IPv6, it's actually a, a list of in tables. The, Worth noting it's that DPTK is able to provide immediate updates as in most of the cases, uh, the update is just updating a single pointer inside, inside its data structures. And the, the second thing to note is that for IPv6, uh, DPTK only handles global, global unicast. So for the link local traffic, Algorithm falls back to, to system radix. Uh, then the XR originally it was tailed for large scale fibs, but it works really well for small scale fib too, as you as you can see in the pre previous picture. It is actually best of currently available for small and uh, large FIB scenarios. The implementation has been contributed by Markozek and it is not using the, it is not able to provide the immediate update, so it uses update batching. The binary search, they're really pretty simple. Uh, that that's just the array of sorted of sorted uh, IP addresses. It's simple and really cache effective for uh, for small route scale. Array is immutable and is rebuilt on every route change. The, uh, the thing to note here is that actually 
It is scheduled for a build on every route change, but scheduled to be rebuilt. Generally, a framework works the following way. If something, if algorithm requests the rebuild, it is not rebuilt immediately, but it's scheduled to be rebuilt within uh, 50 milliseconds. So if uh, there is a spike of updates going in, the, the updates will still be amortized within this 50 milliseconds chunk. So even if the algorithm is immutable and re requires rebuild on every change, it would still doesn't work that bad even for, 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 for the full view. Um, <clears throat> then the Radix Lockless and effectively it's the same variation of system default try, uh, just built on continuous memory chunk and some optimization on the socket of the lookup keys. It is also rebuilt on every route change, but as stated in the previous slide, uh, framework has some sort of amortization. So it, in case of spike, it doesn't perform that badly uh, control plane wise. It's good for anything, maybe uh, up to 1000 routes. Um, then let's take a look at the actual performance. Uh, despite the fact that all of the that the micro tests does uh, show the great changes with regards to just routing lookup, overall. Uh, forwarding uses uh, in overall CPU cycle spent in forwarding that's about like 10 to 15 percent spent in there there may be up to 30 percent spent into the lookup uh, the rest is the rest of the CPU cycles are spent in the network drivers so So the actual performance difference are not uh, not not as impressive as it was in the previous graph. So it's about when we look at the full view lookups, it's about 20, uh, 21 percent uh, performance increase for IPv4 and about 30 percent increase for IPv6. That's uh, that's the check done by the, that's the performance test done by Oliver on the original version for DXR and DPDK LPM6 for IPv6 use case. Um, <clears throat> so, what are the next steps? First of all, To support BERT, oh, we need to either like to support multipath and BERT, we need to add direct uh, ac direct access to uh, add functionality to create next hops and next hop groups via RTSOC. So the actual routing daemon uh, such as BERT or Quagga can refer to the uh, to the next hope by indexes and not not require a complex parsing of the multipath routes. And internally, they both Burrows and Quagga internally they also uses uh, next hopes already. So it would be even. Uh, it would be a native interface between the user land and the kernel where routing daemons and 
kernel don't exchange their full version of next hops pro providing uh, for each route update providing the full detail but provide the lightweight updates for example if we uh, change the multipath route it would be uh, it would be sufficient just to provide the new multipath index uh, new index of the new next hop group to the routing daemon without uh, without the need to list the the entire next hop group or some the next hop routes with the next hop groups in the routing socket uh, similarly netlink uh, netlink brings even more functionality by uh, having native support for these next hops and next hop groups as a couple of years ago similar functionality was uh, added to linux kernel so the um, such support has been added to to quagga uh, and that's yes, that's that's the primary changes i wanted to talk about Okay, let, let me try to, oh, with the five minutes remaining, let, let me try to read the questions and uh, providing, uh, provide some answers. <clears throat> uh, for which routing demons have been tested with the new routing API? Uh, it's both uh, mainly Quagga, FRR, and Bird. Though the API by itself uh, user uh, user land change uh, RTSOC interface ha hasn't changed, so the the old version still works. RT entry next hop field uh, what is used for it's it's just a pointer to to the actual next hop. It's a pointer. Uh, for will we lose route with custom MTU in FreeBSD thirteen? Uh, no, it. it it remains as is, uh, despite the fact that we have moved the MTU in the next hop. Uh, underlying, uh, it it will still work uh, internally. A routing subsystem will just create a new next hop with a new MTU. Uh, for MPLS, uh, I. I don't have any estimate, but hopefully yes. Uh, can NextHop contain interface-specific parameters? Uh, <clears throat> there are no explicit uh, framework to support this right now, but ideally, uh, ideally yes, that. That was the design idea that the tunneling interfaces should be able to create their custom next hops mm, with a, additional data that that can be uh, that can be used. Uh, for Quagga with thirteen point uh, zero release, uh, well, sadly uh, there were a number of issues with. Uh, RTSOC related changes in 13.0 uh, and indeed that that largely breaks uh, breaks the interface. Quagga should work with uh, 13 stable but given given the way uh, community like it looks like community has really moved to FRR so my suggestion would also be to just to switch to FRR. I haven't seen a lot of updates with Quagga nowadays. Uh, how long will it take in 3BZ13 to load a full table? Uh, I think it was less than 30 seconds for IPU4 the, the last time I, I checked. Uh, but 
uh, I don't measure this on a regular basis. Uh, are any cost routes allowed now? Any uh, any costs are allowed. You you can have multiple slash thirty twos pointing to a different interfaces, but for the uh, local slash remote, that's uh, something different that kicks in. It's like an administrative distance, which is similar to what we see in the like neighboring. Uh, in the like real routers, like local route always wins, so it's not possible to to have like multipath routes. Uh, so currently, if you touch the uh, the local IPv4 route, it, it will just always win and kick the and kick the remote one. Uh, for forwarding latencies, uh, no, I haven't. For porting netlinks, yes, there was uh, there was a GSOC uh, which delivered the, the basic uh, netlink functionality, and uh, this is potentially something that uh, will be merged. Uh, okay, so I'm out of time. Uh, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for the questions. Thank you.